proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Hallelujah. She divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant, and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. Gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and much joy to you, people of God. We come today to the thorny question of divorce. The Pharisees, seeking once again to test Jesus, ask him whether, in his rabbinic opinion, it is lawful to divorce. Jesus asks them, Well, what does the law of Moses say? The Pharisees know what it says. Deuteronomy 24 allows divorce, a prudent concession to human bad decisions. But Jesus won't let it rest there. He goes back behind the law of Moses to God's original order of creation. His point is that divorce is not so much prohibited as it is impossible. Jesus says that the one flesh bond of marriage cannot be broken. It can only be adulterated. The church from the very beginning has struggled with this very, very hard teaching. Even St. Matthew, as he writes his gospel, his expansion of what St. Mark, the first gospel, has to say, he adds into this saying of Jesus, except for unchastity. Already before the canon of the New Testament is closed, the church has introduced an exception. And the church has struggled with this teaching ever since. Society has struggled with marriage and divorce throughout the ages. 
in our day, there is no institution of society under more attack than marriage. And from the point of view of our Lutheran understanding of how human beings live and work together, there is no human institution more important than marriage. So what are we to do with this thorny teaching of Jesus? Maybe in this teaching we can find something those who have been through divorce, those who may be contemplating divorce, those who are trying to live out what we are told from the beginning was God's intention for their lives, maybe all of us can find something in this teaching that will help us as we live together. So Jesus says that in the beginning, God created them male and female. And in the part of the creation story that we have, as our first reading today, we hear the very first thing that God said is not good. Throughout chapter 1, as he's creating all the creatures of the world, all the things of the universe, he declares that everything is good, very good. Today we hear the first thing he says is not good, and that's to be alone. Human beings are made for companionship because we are made in the image of God. That God is the triune God whose very Godhead consists in the self-giving of the persons to one another. God, quite literally, is relationship. And so we are made for self-giving relationship. Even the, even the animals beautiful and beloved, cannot fulfill this need. In the creation story, man rules over the animals. But in woman, he finds a mirror of himself. This is the companion fit for him. This is the one to whom he can give himself without reserve. And she like. The essence of the marriage vow is the vow of lifetime fidelity, of complete giving to the other person without holding anything back. It is not, we will be married for as long as it suits me. We will be married for uh, until I find something better. Marriage is not an experiment or a contract with escape clauses. Marriage is God's way of propagating the human race. Man and woman give themselves to one another and in that self-giving one flesh union bring forth new life. And then they dedicate themselves to that new life. This is how the human race goes on from generation to generation. And this self-giving relationship and the bringing forth of new life out of it touches the depths of who we are as human beings. Because it is the mirror of a greater mystery. The mystery of Christ himself, who left his Father and became flesh to find a bride. And he found her his bride to the church, and gave himself for her. The very last images of Scripture are the marriage supper of the Lamb, the new Jerusalem arrayed like a beautiful bride. So what about us? We do not yet see this life as it is meant to be. We are not yet the people we are meant to be. What does this teaching about marriage and divorce 
offer for us and our broken relationships and our broken hearts and the way that we try to live out our vocation the best we can, stumbling and falling at every turn, as indeed we all do. As we make our way through this world, seeking companionship, enduring loneliness, suffering broken relationships, seeking relationship, the great teaching that Jesus sets before us is not a call for us to live as perfect people but for us to recognize that God's power is made perfect precisely in our weakness. As we make vows and try to keep them, as we make vows and sometimes break them, as others make vows to us and break them and break our hearts, we do not see perfection in our lives, but we do see Jesus who gave himself to us completely on the cross, who gives himself for us day by day as we return from our brokenness to the way that he mends us through word and sacrament, through the mutual conversation and consolation of our brothers and sisters, for we all are brothers and sisters. He's not ashamed, Hebrews says, to call us brothers and sisters. He has opened the door for us to be adopted, to call God our Father, to call Christ our brother, to be united in one family of God's children. Jesus doesn't say, who enters the kingdom of God? The one who keeps all his vows perfectly. <laughs> who enters the kingdom of God? The one who enters it as a child. The one who re recognizes that every single one of us is radically dependent on God for everything good in our lives. Every good and perfect gift comes down to us from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In us, there is much variation and shadow due to change. Because in our lives, as we strive to live out our vocations, as we strive to be faithful to our vows, we see our weakness. And that drives us to Christ. It is only through him that we are able to remain faithful to one another, faithful to our calling, faithful to our God. And so we, trusting him, relinquish our hard-heartedness. And we affirm life and love and God's goodwill for us. As we journey on together, to our Father's house and the wedding supper of the Lamb. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.